Hi kids, Shadow here. Welcome back to Vivid Kids. The monthly theme for December is God's love is a gift. We don't earn it or buy it. Hold on, I'm gonna go over here and talk. Just go right down here. Hold, that's a big step. Hold on, hold on, here I come. Here I come. Okay, so I need a massage while I'm telling this story. So, oh, here we go. Okay, so anyway, this is a lesson about grace. Jesus sees compassion all the time. He sees our needs and has pity on us and helps us and has grace. And we don't earn it and we don't buy it, but God showers us with it anyway. Okay, so are you guys ready for a story? The story this week is Healing at the Pool of Bethesda. Bethesda. Boy, is that a hard word. Bethesda. Okay, let's get started. Hello, children. It is Stork, and it feels so nice to be by the fire, all cozy. Our story today is called The Healing at the Pool of Bethesda, and it is a very special story. You see, Jesus had come to Jerusalem to attend a feast. As he walks by himself on a Sabbath morning, he is deep in thought. Soon he finds himself near a place called the Pool of Bethesda. There are five beautiful covered porches around the pool, similar to like the one I am when I am in Acapulco, in Mexico. So this is the kind of place that should be peaceful and be decorated with lush green plants, colorful flowers. Instead, it is a place of mourning and it also smells of, of sickness. All around the pool, lying in all angles and sitting hunched over are great numbers of sick people. Jesus stops and as he looks around, he sees blind, deaf and crippled people. He sees people with uh, stomach problems, uh, skin diseases, all kinds of sickness. There are old people and children and people of all ages in between. You see, it's not only one type of people. So all are here hoping for a miracle. But this is also a place of disappointment, see. So the people are waiting for the water in the pool to move. Aha, uh -huh, to move. You see, some believe it will be stirred by an angel. And whoever is first in the water, when it stirs, will be healed. And Jesus knows that this is not true. That just, that's kind of silly, no? But, but that's what the people thought. And uh, Jesus, he, he knows better, right? And so the people wait and they watch. And when the water does move, the eager people, uh, desperate for healing, they, they rush forward and trample those in front of them, similar to like uh, the, the Black Friday shopping that I seen on, on the YouTube. If you, if you look it up on the YouTube, you see a bunch of people just literally running and sometimes they trample over people in front of them trying to get the deals. So this, this was the same. Right, they rush forward, they trample those in front of them who are smaller and who are weaker just so they can be the first ones into the pool and be healed. But instead of a place of healing, this is quite the opposite. It's more of a place of death. So as Jesus looks over these crowds of sick people, he has compassion on them. He wants to heal all of them. He knows that if he heals all of them today, the Sabbath, it would cause a great commotion among the Jewish leaders, of course, because they want their hand in everyone's cookie jar. Yes, for sure. So Jesus knows each person's name and their sickness, but he especially notices one man who has been crippled for uh, 38 years. That is a long time, no? Si, por supuesto. So Jesus also knows that this man is sad because there was no one to help him reach the water. Like we said, they, they all thought it was killing water. So he is lonely, discouraged, and feels that he is at this shut out of uh, God's mercy. No, 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 my friend, that is not true. Jesus quietly kneels beside him. He bends over to see his face and gently asks, 
do you want to be healed? And hope jumps in this man's heart, you see. He really wanted this. Of course, he wants to be healed, doesn't everyone here? He doesn't know who Jesus is. He doesn't know Jesus can heal him in an instant. The man thinks that his only hope of being healed is to get into that water. See, like everybody else thinks. So he tells Jesus, Sir, I don't have anyone to help me get into the pool. Whenever I try, someone always gets in before me. Jesus doesn't ask the man to believe in him or even to know who he is. Even though the man doesn't feel worthy of God's love, Jesus wants to pour his grace out on this man. So he says, get up, pick up your bed and walk. The man doesn't hesitate. He obeys immediately. He wants to be made well. Nerves and muscles that haven't been used full for years spring to life. The man jumps up. He rolls up his rug and a blanket and he looks around for the one who healed him. But Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. He's almost like a like a what do you call a superhero, right? Like a like a Robin Hood. He you know he he helps them and then he goes off, right? That is what they do. You you never really know who they really are or their true identities. And so that was Jesus. And so later the man and Jesus meet in the temple and the man is overjoyed to know him and tells people all around the good news Jesus has healed him that day Jesus healed the man's body and Jesus' healing and loving grace brought the man into harmony with God oh Jesus says to us with such love and pity will you be healed he wants us to be healthy in body and spirit too his grace is a gift of love for us all, just like what he did for this man. I, I hope you like the story, children, and that you know that we can all be healed with God's love.